So, Dr. Dr. He, um, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to speak with you. They call him China's Frankenstein, which would make her the bride of Frankenstein. Only she's not allowed into China, and he's not allowed to leave it. After doing time for a gene editing experiment that shocked the scientific community, the world's most infamous biophysicist is staging a controversial comeback. Well, I believe the embryo gene editing can help us to defeat many diseases and improve human health. His biggest supporter is a rising star in the field who's just as passionate about pushing boundaries. We can definitely create some really interesting animals, like unicorns, flying dragons. If regulation allows, I'm sure some humans would want to, you know, um, make themselves X-Men. While government officials keep them separated physically, technology is advancing fast and there are a growing number of scientists like them who are frustrated with the slow pace of change. It begs the question. Can anyone actually stop them? Kathy Tai is a 30-ish biotech entrepreneur, recognized as a prodigy in the life sciences domain. Born in China but raised in Canada, she published her first scientific paper at age 16. She pivoted from researcher to startup founder while still in her teens. Tai enrolled at the University of Toronto, where she studied biotech, However, she left college early after being awarded a field fellowship in 2015 at the age of 18. The fellowship gives $100,000 to entrepreneurs 22 and younger who are willing to drop out of school to build companies. With the funding, she co-founded Renomics, which focused on analyzing genetic variants for clinical diagnostics. Her stock rose rapidly. She became the youngest partner at a Silicon Valley venture capital firm at 21, made the Forbes 30 under 30 in healthcare by 22, and founded LockBio, a digital health and telemedicine platform by 23. You can use our platform to launch your own consumer-facing telehealth or online prescription service. In early 2025, Tai teamed up with biohacker Josiah Zayner to launch the Los Angeles Project. The venture aims to create genetically enhanced animals, famously promising glow in the dark pets as a proof of concept. We can definitely create some really interesting animals, like unicorns, flying dragons. Look, I love sci-fi. We're really interested in creating a six-legged land mammal. In the biotech world, she's known as outspoken and a free thinker. Like her more notorious husband, Kathy is frustrated with the slow pace of innovation in her field. Can man play God? I'll put this in context. Is human gene editing ethical? 41-year-old Haji Ankui is infamous for his role in producing the world's first gene-edited human babies. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies a few weeks ago. The experiment ultimately landed him behind bars for three years. A native of China's Hunan province, the biophysicist got a doctorate from Rice University in 2010 and conducted postdoctoral research at Stanford. Around 2012, he returned to the People's Republic as an associate professor at the Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen. That's where he established a lab focused on genome sequencing and gene editing. Everything changed in late 2018 when he announced a major scientific breakthrough in a highly unorthodox manner. Through a series of YouTube videos in 2018, he revealed the birth of the world's first gene-edited babies. It was just days before a major scientific conference. He calmly described how he used a powerful gene-editing tool called CRISPR-Cas9 to edit embryos. He disabled a gene called CCR5 in hopes of making them resistant to HIV. This surgery removed the doorway through which HIV entered to infect people. The father was HIV positive, but the mother was not. The gene editing was done during the in vitro fertilization process. The Chinese government generally prohibits IVF for people living with a virus that causes AIDS. The scientist privately recruited couples for the project, arranging the IVF himself through partnerships with doctors who were unaware of the gene editing. 
The news shocked the world and triggered immediate backlash from scientists, ethicists, and governments. He basically trod all over international consensus about ethical limits about gene editing. It broke right before the second international summit on human genome editing in Hong Kong, where he gave a now infamous talk defending his actions. Scientists feared that the work opened the door to so-called designer babies and that off-target effects might harm the children later in life. Uh, if there are any unwanted uh, uh, side effects happen to the baby of the volunteers, uh, uh, I will feel the same pain as they do, and uh, it's going to be my own uh, responsibility. Chinese authorities reacted swiftly and forcefully. An investigation confirmed he recruited eight volunteer couples and the project resulted in two pregnancies. The third gene-edited baby was born in 2019, according to later court disclosures. He also forced ethics approval documents to duck oversight. In December 2019, a Chinese court convicted He and two collaborators of illegal medical practices and violating regulations. He is going to jail. He is going to be in prison for three years for carrying out what the Chinese government says were illegal medical practices. His colleagues received lesser prison terms and fines for their roles. Amid the global reckoning, China enacted new regulations explicitly banning human germline editing for reproductive purposes and tightened the ethical review process for sensitive biomedical research. Hey, became known as China's Frankenstein in the press. He left prison in April 2022, remaining unrepentant about the core idea. His re-emergence into public life started cautious and became increasingly bold. In 1796, Edward Jenner submitted his paper on the smallpox vaccine discovery to Royal Society for publication, and it was rejected. In 20 18, I submitted two papers on world first genetic babies to the journal Nature, and again, they were rejected. His comeback has been fraught with uncertainty and scrutiny. His role as a research professor at the Wuchang University of Technology in Wuhan ended after only five months when the university reportedly fired him for speaking to foreign journalists about his work. He moved to Beijing and became increasingly active on the X social media platform, where he remains defiant to this day. He recently called the project the Sputnik moment of biotech. Posting pictures of himself in a lab coat, he claimed to have set up a research lab. However, journalists reported that the lab space is within a Peking University affiliated complex and was not truly his. In any case, he was forced out. The bolder his online presence became, the more it intersected with his future bride. His posts became more provocative and meme-like, with grand statements like, Great revolution begins with controversy. While this was going on, the scientist apparently connected with Tai, initially through professional intellectual interests. Then, based in the US, Tai conducted an interview with He in early 2024, which was published on NASDAQ's website. What do you see as the next chapter of your scientific career? I have proposed a research project using embryo gene editing to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. So our next generation will no longer worry about Alzheimer's. It has since emerged, Tai was the strategist behind the social media transformation. As his comeback gained momentum, the two grew closer, and by early 2025, it was obvious they were an item. The couple wed in Beijing in April 2025. As noted in Chinese media, it is He's second marriage. He publicly announced what he called a surprise marriage on X, even declaring that his new biotech venture would be named Kathy Medicine in honor of his bride. Despite the hopeful start, the newlyweds have spent most of their marriage so far physically separated. Weeks after the nuptials, Tai posted an update saying that the two may never see each other again. She said she intended to move to China to be with her husband and had sold her place and her car. While traveling to Beijing, she was stopped at the behest of Chinese officials during a layover in the Philippines. Authorities informed her that she was not allowed to enter China. 
she ultimately returned to the States. In an interview in May 2025 with tech journalist Ashley Vance, she described herself as collateral damage in a larger conflict. She believes Chinese officials blocked her entry as a geopolitical move to stifle their planned work. She suggested her advocacy for controversial science may have prompted the retaliation. Observers believe Tai is rebranding her husband as a biotech rebel to win favor with younger and more contrarian audiences. Some experts suspect that behind the curtains he may have tacit support or at least tolerance from certain Chinese officials who are eager for biotech advancements. They point out that he has become progressively bolder in his public rhetoric over time and that the Chinese government could easily silence him if that's what they wanted. Lulu and Lana, they are living a normal, peaceful, healthy life with their parents now. He continues portraying himself as a busy innovator focused on gene editing cures. Tai says she's living in Toronto for the moment, focusing on bringing literal unicorns into the real world with the Los Angeles project. Though their future together remains uncertain, the scientific consensus could very well shift in their favor. Amid an intensifying technological arms race, today's bioethics could transform overnight. CRISPR is about to change everything. The sky's the limit for what scientists can do. Many biotech experiments happening today would have been too controversial 10 to 20 years ago, but shifting attitudes, technologies, and funding have pushed the boundaries. Even touching a human embryo with CRISPR would have caused outrage in the post dali era. Today, scientists in the UK, China, and the United States legally edit embryos in labs as long as they're not implanted and destroyed after a few days. One of the buzziest companies today, Colossal Biosciences secured significant funding after demonstrating the ability to genetically engineer an Asian elephant with woolly mammoth traits. Its valuation of over $10 billion makes it the first Texan deca corn. Labs have also created synthetic embryos from stem cells with no fertilization, showing early brain and heart tissue. Other labs have used gene therapy to improve memory or learning in mice. There are also companies like Elon Musk's Neuralink implanting chips directly into people's brains. And startups like Cortical Labs are rushing computers to market that are powered by lab-grown human brains. For more on that, Check the related video.